coming to you live. Oh, sorry. Wow. and Mr. To Keep for Cancer coming to you on a, actually it's a Friday night, but you guys are gonna be viewing this on a Sunday. So happy Sunday to you all. Are they slow? Are. <laughs> Is that why? Just, you just be quiet and, okay. and do oh, what we said, yes, honey. Yes, okay. Just not, he's got issues. <laughs> okay, anyway, if you have not been following my channel and you have no idea who I am, just let me tell you. <laughs> my name is Jody to keep your cancer. And I have been living with cancer for the last 20 years. Last nine years, I have been struggling with stage four metastatic uh, breast cancer, triple negative. And right now, the cancer has pretty much spread a lot of places. My lungs, my sternum, my spine, my lung bone, my hip, and anywhere else it can find a spot, it just takes up residence. So that's where I am in my journey. Okay, and we are in this together. So we are going to do, a I put the questions out ahead of time, and now I'm just gonna go through them as quick as I can so we can get as many in as possible. And the topic today is basically um, how we do is with caregiving and the stresses of caregiving, and just a little bit about us. I mean, I got questions all over the place about a bunch of stuff, so we're just gonna answer them, and we'll see what makes it to cut. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's start with, hoo-hoo, um, an easy one. How long have you two been married? Since 1984. Yep. September 1st, 1984. <clears throat> and... <gasps> Since 1984! <laughs> And how long is that? That's a long time. That's I. That's um, I never remember. He always has to figure it out for me. It has been thirty-six long years. No, I'm just kidding. Thirty-six years. Soon to be thirty-seven. September first. All right. And that question was from Wendy uh, Stanley. Hi, Wendy. Okay, um, and I got another one from Tan Tanya Nelson. For how long have you guys been married? Same answer. Oh, Tanya. Same, yeah, yeah Tanya. Tanya. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see. How has your husband helped you with your illness? Okay, well. Um, I drive a lot. He drives, <laughs> <laughs> gets me my drinks, my food. Um, I mean, basically we do everything together. Anything that I need, um, he just kind of foresees it a lot of times. Sometimes in the beginning he did not foresee it. <laughs> and I thought he should. And uh, there was a lot of like hurt feelings and stuff. But um, now he takes more of a um, try to figure it out because Jody's going to hurt me if I don't. <laughs> And you know we've worked. It's been hard, but we've worked uh, to get it to get it right. But he helps me by getting the dishes done, um, house chores, uh, wash. washing. Not as good on my wash, but really good on his wash. My he wash does is always, always does his wash, <laughs> totally. So one thing that I do have to say though that has been really helpful is like on holidays, I love, love, love to have um, events here at our house and like Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I honestly, I can't pull it off by myself. So he has become Mr. Mom. He has been doing the cooking and um, gets the house ready for it. And then I just get up at last minute and put my makeup on and look pretty for the... Yeah, that's the way we do it. But he knows how much that means to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Stop. So he knows how much that means Hello, to me. Hello, everybody. I am British, though. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and humor, and humor. He's got a great sense of I humor, am, as you can tell. I am Okay. cereal. Um, all right, this is for you, Ray, from Barb Hill. Help Hi, help. Barb says, when did you first realize you were in love with the sweet Jody? <laughs> How much time do we have? Okay, 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 here's the story. Here's the story. And maybe someone might ask this other question later. But um, uh, 
it, this will probably answer two questions. So I'm a waiter at Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor restaurant in Montclair. And um, I'm, I'm waiting tables and in walks this cute blonde. On a, it must have been a Sunday because it was slow and it was during the day and that was the only day I worked during the day. So Sunday afternoon, she walks in and I said, can I help you? And she says, can I see the manager? And I said, well, what do you need? She goes, oh, I want to apply for a job. And I, I was different then. I was a different person then. But I, I literally looked her up and down and went, baby, you're hired. <laughs> and then she kind of looked at me like, uh, are you the manager? I, said, I was thinking, this is the man my mama warned me about. <laughs> and I had a mustache. I was. He looked a lot older. I looked older. a lot older. Everybody <laughs> thought I was older. Um, I'm only a year older than she is. And I looked her up and down. She said, are you the manager? And I said, no, but baby, you're hired. <laughs> you had a little So white... was that when well, you... Hold on, I'm not finished. It goes on. It goes on from there. So you were wearing the uh, the striped white and like black, bluish kind of puff sleeve outfit. Um, so I got the manager. I went back to waiting tables. She's in the other room where there's nobody eating, sitting at the table, going over the paperwork with the manager. And I keep going out of my way to carry the food through that room. <laughs> and I kept yelling, hire her, like that. Well, anyway, long story short, she got hired. Yeah, she had no idea. Manager wasn't too happy about it, but she had no idea. Um, but it's okay, because we always joked at Farrell's. So fast forward to uh, after she gets a job, she's working there, I thought she was cute, and uh, kind of wanted to ask her out. And so I did ask her out, I said, hey, what are you doing tonight? And uh, she said, oh, I'm going bowling with this other guy. And some other people. So I'm like, fine. And I left it at that. So I went home, realized, wait a minute, there's two girls and two guys. And the one I like is, uh, no, I, so I jumped in the shower, got changed my clothes, drove all the way back down to the uh, bowling alley, showed up unannounced, and ended up, um, actually, you couldn't go with the other guy be, to, to go home because his window was broken. It was a cold night, so hey, why don't you come with me? And he was a little bit drunk, <laughs> just yeah, to be honest. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Not me. No, not him. Not him. So I, I, I'm driving her home. We get into the driveway. She was living with her aunt and uncle at the time. And I'm like, how can I prolong this? And I said, are you hungry? And she's <laughs> like, I could eat. So then we backed out of the driveway and drove to the 24-hour uh, restaurant, Benji's, on Central Avenue in Upland. And we stayed there eating until... Wow, uh, 6 a.m. Yep. So, um, and we've been together every day since then. Pretty much. That was it. Every single day since then. Okay. Um, I was a player before there were players. That is true. Everyone warned me about him, said do not go out with him. He is chases every skirt that walks by. But that part was true. And bad news, though. I was bad news. That's yeah, what they said. that's what they said. I was bad news, and our marriage would never last because he was just a horrible you know, womanizer and all this. And so 37 years later. It might not last. Ha! You just never know. I mean, it's, it's only been 37 years. Yeah. Still pretty, still pretty I new. I just want to say Rhonda, ha ha. Rhonda <laughs> Carey Bird, ha ha. Oh, sorry. So, okay. This is, this is a good one. Um, how do you manage your stress, um, Ray? Oh, me? How do I manage my stress? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I beat the dog. In fact, Bentley, no. hey, Bentley, <laughs> Bentley, did you Please want... do not say that. Come Bentley, run, 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 Bentley, run, Daddy's going to get you. Go, honestly, how do you really do oh. that? <laughs> Bentley's <laughs> trying to get on Daddy's lap. He goes, I love you, Daddy. Come here. Come here. All right, now we, okay, I bend down to pick you up and you, and you sit down. Okay, um, okay. Oh, how do I relieve stress? So, I mean, I, I, I use humor a lot uh, to mask my pain and anguish. And I also uh, do a lot of things I like to do. I, I teach Sunday school. I uh, yell and scream at the kids when I'm doing that. Just kidding, I don't. Um, I spend time with the family. I mean, we have our, our son, daughter, and other son, and their wives, and their kids. We have grandkids. Um, so, I mean, that's, you know, pretty yeah. much, pretty much the best part. And I think what's part. really important uh, for the spouses or the caregiver of the person with a terminal illness or a chronic illness is don't stop doing the things that you love to do. And I know it's hard, you're leaving your, your spouse home and you're giving them the TV changer and you're like, I'll be back, I'm gonna go play golf or whatever. You know, 
keep doing those things because those are the things that are going to keep you both sane in the long run. And like for Ray, it was teaching Sunday school and then we both sing on the worship team or used to sing on the worship team together at church. And um, after a while, we did have to cut, you know, some things down. Uh, but yeah, keep doing the things that you normally would do. That's that's my best advice, I think, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and don't feel guilty about it. Except don't go golfing every day. Yeah, that would be good. That's You know, all things in moderation. Okay, so um, let's see. That one we already <laughs> kind of got. All things in moderation. I don't know how many times I've heard you say that. <laughs> A lot. Um, where did we meet? We you went through that already. See, I killed, I killed two questions in one, um, one answer. Okay. So what advice, Jody, would you give to other people in your situation to help guide their spouses? Wow, that's a hard one. <laughs> you know what? I think um, remember they are in it with you and they are hurting with you. Whether they show it or not, whether they even know it or not, um, they are in the same, they're with you. They're hurting emotionally, physically. In fact, they're taking on a lot more um, emotionally than whatever you can't handle, they have to have. So I would say grace would be the number one thing when you feel like, you know, maybe they're not pulling, you know, they're not doing what you need. So they're not mind readers. So make sure that you are, you're politely vocal about what you need say honey you know what? i appreciate you um doing this but what i really need done right now is this like uh for for an example for a while um i need to make i need my i needed my knickers washed really bad had no clean clothes nothing and he was like cleaning out the weight room and doing the you know the kitchen and i don't know what else doing the garage and and you know doing a lot of stuff but i needed my knickers cleaned <laughs> and so i just got really angry for the longest time and for those of you who aren't british <laughs> uh oh <laughs> knickers um, are underwear yes underwear or panties and i think panties are a distasteful way to say it yeah don't say that anyway so anyway your undergarments so i just realized i was getting really mad at him but i had never really just said honey I need my clothes cleaned, you know, so don't expect them to read your mind, you know, don't get mad because they're not doing what you need. Tell them what you need and tell them exactly what you need and how to do it. Because sometimes men and women, we don't know. I mean, we assume they know, but they don't. No, men are, men are different. I mean, men, at least some men, me, for instance, you know, I, I want to fix things. I come in and I'm, I'm, I'm a warrior. I can handle this and I can deal with this problem and I can solve it and that's what we want to do and so um, you know we we internalize things and we think about things and we try to rationalize things and you know don't get mad if they're not emotional with you right because it's hard for men sometimes to be emotional although since I've had several kids and several grandchildren and I teach kids I, I have a lot easier to be emotional now yeah. Okay, so what is our favorite destination together? You'd say it in the same thing. One, okay, two, three. One, two, three. Well, Idaho. Idaho. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't count, but it looked like you were going to say it. Idaho. Uh, Idaho. <laughs> and Seattle. And Seattle, Washington. Yep. It was Minnesota, but it, it was, was Seattle. It was Minnesota, but then they moved. Uh, Idaho is where our grand, three of our grandchildren are and where we hope to be uh, retiring and moving our little cabin to soon. And Soon. Seattle, How do you think I am? <laughs> Seattle, Washington um, is where my daughter lives. So those are our two favorite destinations. But other than those two, I would say Malibu. Um, we've, we like to go to the boo. Uh, the Malibu, yes. Because um, we've taken a couple um, Trips there. holidays there. Yeah, for our anniversary. And we have some pleasant memories. So. Yeah, yeah, you lay on the beach and me standing there going, I hate the beach. <laughs> yeah, he hates the beach and I just get some sun and wear a cute bikini and, and he doesn't seem to mind. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's awesome that you could you could be on PCH in the middle of summer 
drinking hot coffee because it's like 71 degrees. Yeah, it is beautiful weather. So Malibu is not where our children are. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, do you love Bentley as much as Jody? <laughs> Me? Oh, yes. I, I certainly do. <laughs> I feed him. I water him. I change his puppy bed. Make sure he's got a nice bed, clean. I wash it and get him all ready. And who does he love more? Yep, this silly dog. He does love Daddy to play with. I mean, the minute Daddy comes home, he's just going crazy, running, running all over the place and stuff. Um, let's see, there's a whole bunch up here. Let me get that. Um, how does your faith in God support you? Well, it, I think the question or the answer really is, our faith in God supports us. Yes, exactly. Um, and we, because we have faith in God, we can handle anything. Right. Because right. I mean, we know where we're going to go when we die. We we yeah. know where our hope is in. Our hope is in heaven. So um, we don't fear death. We don't fear problems and issues and things on this earth because this is not our home. Our home right. is is there. So yeah, I mean that's just it. I mean every day. Um, is a step closer, whether you are having a terminal illness or not, every day you're a step closer to death because you have to, you're born, you die, and you pay taxes. So I realize that every time I put my jacket on, I pull a muscle. <laughs> ah, I must be yep. getting old. I know. So, yeah, it's just how you live it and how we choose to live our life. The decisions that we make in life are all based on um, what what God says in the Bible. And so that's our map and that's what carries us. That's what tells us what to do and keeps us sane and gives us comfort. So I hope that answers your questions. All right, now, um, <laughs> says, where do we meet? We've gone through that. Oh, here you go. Um, how does your husband help you with medical issues? And is he involved in your medical decisions? Absolutely not. <laughs> yes, he is. Everything. Well, I, I, I pick up your medicine. Mm -hmm. I refill your prescriptions. I deliver your prescriptions. And then we discuss anything that comes up that, uh, oh, the doctor wants us to do this. Doctor wants us to do this or that. And we sit there and we, we talk it out. What are the pros? What are the cons? Right. We, um, we together, uh, when I first was diagnosed uh, stage four, especially, um, we got on a, a quest on our own, watching documentaries, doing research. You know how geeky I am with research. Uh, reading medical journals. I mean, I read the whole entire China study, people this big <laughs> and it wasn't very interesting but um and we kind of dissected everything and then we both decided that you know this is what something we need to do but instead of just me doing it which means giving up meat which he loved meat and potatoes he's <clears throat> you know red, Amer red american boy um so he gave up animal products and uh, became a vegan same as me so we well, did the, that together. The specialist put you on a yeah. vegan diet with juicing. And I, right. I, all I could think was I can't be sitting there eating my double-double while you're, <laughs> you're sip, sipping on your green juice. So I said, well, I'll do the same thing. And what's been, I haven't had, I haven't had a steak in nine, 10 years at least. Yeah, it's been a long time. Can't even think about it. So, um, yeah, and all, all of our decisions like uh, when to stop chemo, um, whether to keep going, whether or not to keep going, has always been a dual decision. Um, if I, if I can, if we can't come to an agreement, we prior and we this is how our marriage works. We agree that he gets to decide. What? <laughs> yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! Yes. Yeah. Bye. Will that change after the video's over? No. <laughs> So, yeah, so um, all of our decisions are done jointly and with our family. We sit around the table. We talk to our children about it. Um, 
They know everything that we know. Because <laughs> all of our <laughs> kids always have an opinion. Yes, Wait they, a minute, what are you doing? Wait, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yep, so. everyone has an opinion. <laughs> but it's okay because they are all completely supportive. So there you go. All right, so now to Jody's husband by Trent. I, okay, I can never get this right. It's uh, Troll. Can you say this? I could if I had glasses on. Oh, Tracility Photography. Okay. Uh, to Jody's husband. I don't have my glasses. What on. is your favorite <laughs> Jody quirk? <laughs> There's so well, many. Well, recently, <laughs> we were just talking about this. <laughs> she had this. She has this weird laugh all of a sudden, and I and I went. I was like, where did you get that laugh? All, I mean, she's been doing it a lot, too. And it, <laughs> it's, it's, well, that's how, <laughs> obviously it's real, because you, because you can't even fake it. I know, no, I don't it, even know it, I'm doing it. It's kind of like, <laughs> 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 and total too. And I was like, that is not your regular laugh. Where, where'd that come from? Uh, that, that is probably the, uh, the funniest thing. And, and she all, well, calling underwear knickers, that's, that's a little unusual. <laughs> For us <laughs> Americans to do, I have been around my British family a lot, and I have friends in the UK. And, and every single night, she watches a video of a British girl. Yes, Josie. Hi. <laughs> anyway, uh, another influencer that I totally love, Fashion Mumbler. Check her out. Um, also, when I grew up, my grandma, British, always called her them husband's knickers. really good looking. And stuff. Yes, he's very nice. Charlie. Is that weird for nice. me to say that? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so knickers just kind of came from when I was little and I forgot. I was trying to be an American and then it came back. Sorry. Okay, so any, that was another one. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so how are you and what would be your best advice for a caregiver? Oh, and you have a beautiful wife, by the way. Oh, that's That that's... was from uh, Tamika. That's a Swan. question to me. Hi, I, I Tamika, didn't hear thank that. You. Okay, so how am I? How am I, What is my best advice for a for a caregiver? Right. I think we kind of covered that. I mean, you know, uh, be, I will say this: if you're a man and you're the caregiver, and you're not used to being emotional, get used to being emotional. Show your emotions. Uh, one of the things I don't do, I think it, but I don't do it, is constantly ask, "How are you feeling today?" Yeah, never ever okay? asked me how I'm feeling. Because <laughs> I kind of think, well, I already know. Yeah. She she just rolled over ah in pain. I know she's in pain, so I don't have to ask. But that's the problem. Nothing. That's what guys do. They just oh well, I already know. I don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. So get used to saying things, talking men. Mm -hmm. Come on. Don't okay. be so macho. Right. Okay. So now, uh, what's our favorite destination? We went through that one. Um, and get out and do things, you know, for yourself. Like I teach Sunday school that gets me away from everything with people that are, are on my level intelligent wise. And, um, <laughs> and so I can communicate oh. with other people and Here's so like my hobbies. Done. So do a hobby, but don't go every day golfing. Like that, right. So. Okay. So what are some hobbies you and your husband do for fun? Okay. Well, we... We used to sing a lot yep. together. We used to sing at church. Yeah, uh, and we used to do weddings. We are the wedding singers, big time. We do uh, wedding duets and stuff. A lot of people got divorced stuff. after that, though. <laughs> uh, our very yeah. first song that we ever sang together, can you remember it? Almost Paradise. Nope, that no. wasn't it. Wait, oh, no, 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 the very no, first song. I I'm sorry, that. you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Just you and I. Just you and I Share in my love, love together. together Maybe we should have practiced that before we, <laughs> we did that. that yeah, that, that's been three, <clears throat> seven years ago. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. In fact, that was our, that, that we, we were at, I already told you the story. We were at the uh, restaurant mm -hmm. and Fantastic. I had to sing at this thing, this country, country music thing. And I found out she sang, and I went, you sing too? <laughs> and my wheels are turning and think, oh, I can turn this into a date, another date. And I said, oh, I have to sing this thing. We should do a duet. We should get together and practice. So we, we got together to practice, and instead of practicing, we went to a movie. 
Yep. Footloose. Yep, we saw uh, Footloose. Uh, that night. And then uh, I think you know we did it a couple of times. And then finally, I think we did practice at one yeah, time or another. Yeah, I think we practiced somehow. Sang the song and went over well. And and that became a, a, a very popular think, song in our in our car when our first baby was yep. crying. It was the only thing that would make him stop crying. Yep, we'd have to sing just you and I over and over and over again. <laughs> so. And then almost paradise. Yes, was the second was at song. The yeah, wedding. was at the our wedding. Right, yeah. right, right, right. But yeah, we started singing at weddings. I mean, we've sang at hundreds and hundreds of weddings, and that was kind of our thing, our hobby, I guess. Even though we got paid for it, can it still be a hobby to get paid for something? I'm not sure, but anyway, that's it. So there are a lot more questions, but I think we're going to have to um, do it at maybe a part two at another time. So. If you are just now joining us and you don't know that this is not our norm, <laughs> usually it's just me and... I'm um, not allowed on camera. Yeah, he's not allowed on camera only once in a while. But um, thank you for being here with us and thank did, you for did, supporting did us. Okay? And yes, honey, okay. you will be good. You will be rewarded. I'll get you some coffee. So thank you for supporting my channel thank you for supporting me thank you for all the prayers that you have blessed us with through the last two years it's coming up on two years it isn't quite yet two wow. years but it's almost there so i really really appreciate it and i really appreciate all the feedback you gave me on my channel going full time it is amazing so many big things happening i just can't wait to tell you all about them so tune in on wednesday for the next uh, video and this is too cute for cancer oh and if you're not following my journey and we haven't scared you off <laughs> go ahead and hit that subscribe button i have a video coming out every wednesday and every sunday and once in a while i throw a vlog in there and you get to follow me around and see what i do every day um yeah we talk about chronic illness a lot of fun stuff uh caregiving um health vitamins hair care you name it we do it but it's all the better um enable us to live our lives the best we can in any situation cancer arthritis depression anything just trying to be our best where we're at right now so i will catch you guys on wednesday this is too cute for cancer signing off and i'm mr too cute for cancer and signing off <laughs>